In this video, we're going to focus on creating a realistic looking reflection without a object that's already posing that reflection. So in this case, we're going to use this figure who's jumping with a bass guitar, kind of screaming with a kind of an abstract background onto a, a black background with uh, what I would call a reflection of himself uh, below that's kind of fading into black. So to achieve this effect, we're going to start with a couple of source images, this being one and this being the other. So combined, they'll come together and create this final piece here. So this can apply to any any object that you're thinking of. So um, when I think of a reflection, I'm thinking sometimes of a glass on a table kind of thing. So keep that in mind when we're going about this. If any, any kind of object that you want to pose this reflection on, you can do just the same. So let's get started with the base image here, which we're going to use. Uh, we need to actually remove the background from this one. So I'm going to save it down as a new file. Go to file, save as. And I have a source directory and a final directory. If you're following along and you're a pro member, you'll be able to access these. So I'm going to first just call this realistic reflections. Uh, working and we'll just call it as it is and then we'll save it to the final folder I already have this created so I'm gonna overwrite it great so with this file I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the base layer and just save it down I'm gonna keep the visibility off and lock it which it already is so we can go ahead and tweak this photo to start removing the background from it maybe I'll call it base player Okay, and to do my favorite way to remove a background from a photo and in Affinity Photo is using the selection brush tool. So you'll just kind of click and drag. And right off the bat, there's going to be quite a bit of finesse with this photo. It's going to be kind of hard to get perfect, so it could take you some time. I'll probably increase the speed of this video just so you don't have to sit through all of this, but just know that. It's a trial and error kind of process. So. All right, so we have our pixel selection going here. It looks pretty good. Uh, you'll notice if you're following along, it took quite some time just because you need to add and subtract certain areas and certain shades and highlights and stuff kind of mix into the background. So it makes it kind of challenging. Uh, but with everything selected, I wanted to invert the pixel selection and it should actually appear this way. There we go. With that selected as is, with it inverted, we want to refine the selection a bit. wait for this to fire up right now it's selecting the background and what we want to do is kind of brush in certain trouble areas that we know might kind of be hard to get the selection from which is typically hair for sure um, you can just brush those in you don't have to mess with these controls so much unless you prefer to I actually like to brush through this refine selection tool just to kind of get as good a selection as I can in the end uh, because we're going to mask this back background off and we don't really want to see it that much of the background at all. It should be pretty good. Affinity Photo is pretty great about selections so a lot of this work is done for you luckily. You won't have to do a ton of touch-ups but still can often be some. On the output I'm going to actually make it a mask 
and this will hopefully remove the background for us automatically. So great. This is what we're going for to start with. And what I want to do just for backup is create a new layer and duplicate that one. I'm going to hide the visibility of the one below it and just lock it for now in case we need to revert back to it. And I'll right click on this layer and merge it visible. And what that does is just creates a new pixel layer based off of let me hide the layer below real quick. It creates a new pixel base layer off of what we had visible in this layer with the mask. So this one we still have the mask and this one we don't. It's just the actual image. So there's two of them. But this is the one we're going to work with for the most part. And I want to decrease the size of this guy for quite a bit. And I'll scale them down. And the biggest trick to creating the reflection effect is to duplicate the layer you're reflecting. And I hit Command J there. And then I'm going to actually right click and hit Transform Flip Vertical. And we'll actually move that layer down quite a ways, actually. We want him to appear like he's pretty far off the ground. And this will be off the canvas at this point, but we actually want to skew this image quite a bit. So we want to just drag from the middle and push in. And we can start there. So to create a more amplified effect, I'm going to add a darker background, which will just be filled with black. Uh, right now it's white, but we'll make it black. There we go. And again, I think I still will decrease hit the size of him, kind of shift him towards the center. Uh, if we really want to make this easy on us, we can go to View, uh, Guides Manager, and just hit these new icons, and you should have a crosshair in the very center of your document that dictates where that actually is. If that's something you want to deal with, you can also turn on uh, snapping if you want to get smart guides and stuff going on on your document. In this case, I'm not going to really rely on those. I'm just going to use these guides that I made. But you can do whichever method you prefer. So this one will align center as well. And it's, it's a little bigger than he is. So I'm actually going to make it touch smaller just to create that depth effect. Because he's higher off the ground, which means he's kind of closer to the camera or whoever is near him in that, that case. Next, I'm going to actually create a effect on, let's see, let's call this the reflection layer. And base player. So on the reflection layer, I want it to be semi-opaque. So we'll decrease to about 75%, maybe less than that. And what I'll end up doing is creating a, a layer mask on this layer. And we can do that in a variety of ways. The easiest is to click this icon here, the mask layer. And that'll create a new mask upon it. And what you can do is grab your paintbrush tool, uh, decrease the size of it. I'm using the bracket keys. And I'll decrease the opacity. My hardness is at zero, which is good. We'll go ahead and paint just at the very top of him, just kind of subtly get him kind of to where it's removing part of that layer almost to where his head's missing great so now we have the reflection effect we can probably decrease the opacity even more if we want to and if you want to adjust the filters on the, the layer, you can do that as well. If you want a different tone, like the luminosity uh, kind of creates a black and white tone. Or you can even adjust the HSL parameters on by adding an adjustment layer. So we can do that too. Maybe I'll add just a bit less saturation on that layer. And we actually need to put it just below so it's only touching that layer. There we go. So it should only be affecting this one. If we decrease this quite a bit, you'll, you'll see the, the color go away. We can also increase it. I'm, I'm going to just get rid of some there. Maybe adjust the luminosity. 
Great. So that's the essential starting point. If we want to create more of a, a scene here, I found this abstract background we can utilize and I'll probably just, you can, you can either just drag it into your document or I'm going to actually place it using file place, abstract background, open that. And you'll get this icon. You can go ahead and drag as far as wide as you want to. I'm going to make it pretty large to kind of over encompass this entire composition here. And I'm going to move it to back. And to do that, you can hit command, use the bracket keys again to shift the layers back and forth. So I'm going to go pretty far back, but just before the black triangle we made. OK, so at its current point, it looks kind of, you know, just thrown into the mix. So we, we want it to kind of blend in a bit. So I'm going to also re decrease the opacity a bit on this one, maybe just to just a tad to 90% or so. And we'll also throw a mask layer on this one. And we can do the same effect using our brush. If you hit B on your command key commands, you get the brush from your tools. And you can start brushing parts of this image out. And I kind of want him to be the focal point, so I'm going to remove parts in the middle so there's nothing really underneath him so much. Kind of giving us a baseline for these abstract effects in the very background. And then we could probably adjust that background opacity just a little more if we want, and even move it. We've got that layer mask there, so I'll actually revert that. So if you want to see a preview without your guides, you can hit command semicolon. I'll go ahead and zoom out to the 100% setting and we'll see our, our composition kind of in our final state here. This is the one I created prior and this is our current state. So I think it's looking pretty good. It matches up to what I did before. And again, this applies to any object, any thing uh, in the sense of if you can subtract the background from it and duplicate it, shift the transform to flip it vertically, and then do some masking effects with opacity, uh, you can achieve this very cool reflection effect in Affinity Photo.